Hey, what's up? This Friday, this Friday, this video is for Friday, September 29th. I don't know why I'm so lost. Anyway, get the agenda and then we're moving right in. Okay, cool. So just as a reminder for the restroom breaks, yeah, you will put up the hand signal, which is right here. I'm not sure if you can see me in the video or not, but it is what it is. I'm not worried about that. But the, the most important thing is a digital pass. Show the screen to the teacher. So just put on your number, face it towards the front of the class, and then um, put your phone, right? Like put your phone inside the lanyard box, and that should be located up front of the class, right? And then go straight to the restroom, come back. Everything else is as normal, okay? Um, let's talk about this for a moment. I wonder what... I don't know. The camera keeps going. Okay, you're just not going to have to be able to see me because every time I press the camera, then it goes on the back. But sorry about that. It is what it is. So let's just talk about this over here for just a moment, right? So we talked about um, this idea. Why do you think that... that um, why do you think... Or why am I going so good? Which ball better resisted um, the motion more effectively? And that would be between the tennis ball and the ping pong ball. A lot of people pick the tennis ball. And so then I asked the question why, and they said because the tennis ball had more mass. That's why they said the reason why. But they said because when it got hit with the same or uh, with the same amount of force, when the same amount of force was applied to both of them, the ping pong ball went faster and further than the tennis ball did. And so those are some really, really good answers. Make sure in here that you draw your pictures, right? And I do want to make sure to, to get that in there. You can just have an arrow. And then label the arrow hand or ping pong ball, however you guys want to go over that, right? So it doesn't have to be this big thing. And I would show you on the camera, but unfortunately, my camera's not working. I don't know. For whatever reason, the camera's not working. So I apologize. Okay. So let's just talk about this inertia and this word inertia. So mostly everyone got most of all these questions. They went through all these questions. Everyone was pretty good with them. Not a big deal. Drawing it, complete the sentences about the motion, right? All of those things, not a big deal. But what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to for sure um, look up this word inertia. And what does this word actually mean, right? So go ahead and look that up and see if you can figure out what that actually means. So pause the screen, look up the word inertia, see what it means, and then come back and let's talk about it, okay? Oh, now, I, now I'm able to get myself in the screen. I don't know what happened, but here we are. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you looked up the word inertia, right? And so let's just go ahead and get this in our journals, right? So the definition of the word inertia says an object will continue in its state of motion until acted on by an outside force. So that is just, and so you want to pause the screen and get this written down, but I'm going to talk about it just a little bit. So it's just saying like this. An object will remain in whatever its state of motion is. So this car's current state of motion is what we call at rest. So there is no, st it's not moving. So it's moving just a little bit only there. But again, if I have it like this, its current state of motion is at rest until acted on by an outside force. Boom, it got acted on by an outside force, and then it went into motion. So just remember that, that, that your state of motion can be at rest or it can be the motion of moving, right? Until it is acted on by an outside force. So we'll talk more about this over the coming days, but at least kind of get that into your frame of reference. Now, as we apply that back to the question, right? How did the inertia affect the motion of the block when the scooter struck the barrier? Now, let me get, get a block and, and the cart. Okay, so remember, how did inertia affect the motion of the block? So, cart's moving along, got the block on it, boom, there is a there is what we would say um, collision. So there's a collision, right? The collision is between the barrier and the cart, okay? The barrier and the cart, that is where the collision is, okay? It's between those two. So, the cart comes to an instance, it comes to a stop, boom, right? As you can see, you can always, and what's happening is the cart is changing speeds at a different rate than the speed of the block. So that's why the block slid forward, right? So the block slid forward because during the collision, boom, they're changing at two different rates, okay? So this slides a little bit forward, okay? 
And because and because of that, right, the reason it actually stopped because there's this thing called friction. So it's friction force. I don't want to get too deep into that right now. But it's because of the fact that the block wasn't involved in that first collision. So the block kept sliding until it came to a rest because its inertia was now different. Because, again, the... <coughs> <coughs> I'm causing this thing. I'm dying. Okay, I'm going to explain this whole part over. So, hey, you got the cart. It comes into a collision with the barrier. Boom, the cart changes speed immediately. Again, it had an outside force that acted on it, right? But the block did not. So it just slides forward. And it's sliding forward. There's friction that is acting on it. And that's what's literally slowing it down, right? But again, it changed at a different at a different rate of change, at a different rate of change because of the fact that it was not involved in that first collision. So it continued. Its inertia was like, hey, I haven't been had an outside force act on me. So it kept moving until the outside force of friction force, right, and gravity acted on it to slow it down, okay? So hopefully that helps you with that. Don't worry. We'll talk more about inertia. It's a little bit more of a complex um, <clears throat> concept. All right. Cool. We got the definition. We're rolling good there. All right, we're moving on to the next thing. So let's talk about these things for just a second, okay? Um, if you look right here, <clears throat> you have balanced and unbalanced forces. So are the forces acting on the object? Are they working together or against one another? So if we have this block, right, and it looks like we have something pushing that's two newtons right here that's a two newtons pushing right here and it also looks like we have two newtons pulling so are they working together and yes they're pointed in the same direction so they are working together so right here we would say oh yes they are working together do you think we should add them up i think we should add them up and in the case when they're working together that means the forces are combining so you see two newtons i'll go back two newtons and two newtons okay cool so we're gonna go ahead and you're like all right two newtons air conditioner acting crazy going in this direction plus right again plus the two newtons also headed in the same direction equals four newtons headed to the right there okay and that and that's exactly how that one should look okay Again, I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so we can look at this. So, two newtons plus two newtons, and they're both headed in the same direction, and they equal to four newtons. That's what would go right here in this box. All right, now let's go ahead and pause the screen, and then you go ahead and try and do four, five, and six. Again, you try to do four, five, and six, and then we'll go over it together here momentarily. Okay, so now we have, again, our object, and in this case, we have two newtons pulling this way. And then we have four newtons pulling the other way, right? So are the forces acting on object B working together or against? And we would be like, thumbs down, they're working against. So this is for, this is against. Okay, so based on your answer on question one, do you think we should add the forces or subtract? What do you think? What do you think? So the answer should be to subtract. So in this case, what we're going to do is this. Now, the way I want you guys always to do this is put the largest force first, okay? So, the largest force that we have that we see up there is 4. So, we're going to put 4 in. And then, that is going to be going to the right there, okay? And then, we're going to subtract 2 in. And that's going to be going to the left there, okay? Now, I'm going to make it big so that way you can see it really good, okay? Blat out. So again, four in going to the right, and then minus the two in, which is going back against it, right? And we're going to say that is equal to two in or two newtons, and it's going to the right because that's the one that's the larger. Boom. Okay? And that's exactly how you should be able to work that out. So it should end up being two newtons to the right. And then we would expect that that object would move in that direction right because that force is larger or is pull, that is pulling is larger in that direction that is actually everything for today hopefully you enjoy homecoming and whatnot and all those things um <clears throat> and then uh on monday we will start on this lab
All right, y'all. Peace. We'll start on the rest of the lab.